about our stitching and other stuff. Happy February. We've been gone a while. So we got a couple messages saying, hope everything's fine. Everything's fine. We're fine. That's fine. Um, yeah. So we've been out because my dad had knee surgery. So I was over there. Replacement. He had a replacement, which is yeah. a big surgery. Well, that's and it's, you know, and it, I really appreciated his um, PT yesterday because she she was like, you know, yeah, this hurts, doesn't it? And he's like, yeah, he goes, it's supposed to. You're only two weeks post op. Mm -hmm. I think it, she said that several times. Well, you're right exactly where you need to be. You're only two weeks post op. Because I think there's a mental piece to this that, you know, you have surgery at 1030 in the morning and you're home by 630. Mm -hmm. That used to be like easy day surgeries, right? When you would sit home, they were like, easy procedures this is a major surgery folks and so mentally i think he thinks he should be farther along I, even though he knows he shouldn't be but i think there's this push and pull and he's bored out of his board because there's only so much daytime tv you can watch and i mean he's streaming. we've got tons of streaming options but he's just tired of watching tv yeah, and he can't boring at some point it is and you know he can sit and read on his tablet i guess he doesn't really read in the family room but he will he will play a game on his phone but he then the other laptop issue or something. So like I would just pull up my laptop and yeah, he's got his tablet. He could, but he just doesn't, I don't know why he hasn't been. Hmm. He but then when he goes into the bedroom and lays, he has to lay flat and then elevate his leg way up high. They don't really want him elevating his head at all. Cause they want that fluid to move. Hmm. He's just laying there flat. Well, you know, you can only hold your tablet so <laughs> long <personal>. like this. <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> you know and, and he's supposed to lay there for a half hour to an hour so he, a couple times I've walked in and he's had music playing he did download a book that he was listening to but I, I haven't heard that me. yeah maybe he finished it what I'm just picturing I'd be afraid I'd fall asleep and drop my tablet drop on his head <laughs> I mean he does nap that's the other thing yeah I feel like is different this time around is that he's a lot more tired but I think because of that AFib that he's got going that we haven't resolved yet. I think that's making him tired or mm -hmm. because he already was tired because of that. But I think it's really taken it out of him. Yeah, he's very chipper. I mean, it's not like he's just, you know, right. But I think he's just, you know, doing those exercises three times a day is boring. And walking around the kitchen loop <laughs> several times a day is boring. And we did walk outside. He wasn't supposed to be outside much. But we went around the corner just to talk to try to talk to the neighbors about something. And his walking is not that smooth yet to be walking across grass. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the neighbors, we had to walk on the neighbor's grass and their grass is really tall. Like it's, they didn't mow before it, the snow and rain came. Mm -hmm. So it's all mushy. Mm -hmm. So it felt uneven. So he's not even really able to walk outside yet. Not that it's that great to walk outside right now. It's freezing cold. So anyway, it's just been... It's only been two weeks, but it feels longer than that. And, uh, but he's way more, he's self-sufficient. You know, he's showering on his own. He's not having, you know, he's getting up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom by himself. He's taking it. It's not like I need to be constantly. Yeah. I just have to take care of everything in the house. Like I have to, you know, there's no division of labor right now. So I'm, right. I'm helping him when he needs help and I'm doing all the house stuff and I'm working. And I think we talked before the, our little break that, we were losing a team member on our team. Um, and so it's two of us doing the work of three um, right at this time, which is terrible. And some other work projects came in that were just worse timing. And they were not, and sometimes those projects that come in are really smooth and they just, you know, these were difficult situations. So, but we did hire somebody. We found out yesterday that our boss did hire somebody and she actually hired somebody that my coworker referred to us who she knows and know she's smart and know she's got a good work ethic. And when right. my boss interviewed her, she said she will fit on our team perfectly personality wise too. So she's got the skill set, and she'll, it won't be an awkward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've got hope that yeah. I think, but she won't start for another week or so. No, we can hang in there. It just was the timing of that all was really friend, friend. Yeah. Yeah. But we made it through, we made it through and he, you know, he just needs to hang in there and do his exercises and just know that it's going to get better. Yeah, it yeah. will. Eventually it will behind him. And yeah, the PT yesterday said knee replacements are my favorite 
or probably any joint replacement are my favorite patients because I know exactly what's happened. I know what's wrong. I know that you're going to be fine. I know that you're going to make progress rather than the random referral shoulder pain. Mm-hmm. Don't know why you've got shoulder pain. Got to figure it out. She goes, this is, this is just way better. <laughs> and she went pretty easy on them. She didn't work real hard, but what she did was pink. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we're back. We're back. We we're just didn't back. have it in us. We missed recording. We thought about doing it last week, but because was I there last week or two weeks? Oh, it was two, two weeks ago, weeks. right before you went home. Last but... week we couldn't. I don't remember why. You had stuff going on. I think we had stuff going on. I don't even know what. I don't. I didn't have much going on. I don't know what last weekend was. <laughs> I don't even know. I think. I think it was. Yeah. I think something happened. I think we just didn't think about doing it Saturday, maybe. And then Sunday you had something going on. Yeah, I have no idea. Oh, Super and Bowl. And then we thought. Super Bowl. We had a Super Bowl party that we went to. Mm-hmm. All day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's and then I we thought about doing it Monday. And I'm like, you know, we could just wait another week. Yeah. And it was fine. We just have a lot yeah. to share. I have a lot to share. Tonight. Have, um, so, okay. If you're new joining us, we're a mother and daughter team, obviously. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> we just, hello. We're doing, I thought we should probably talk about dad because we got several emails just asking how things were Thank going. You. Thank you for your kind emails that lifted our spirits, yes. made us feel loved. Um, I have three it daughters is. who sometimes jump in. They've been spotty lately <laughs> with um, their handy crafting. Millie still crossages almost every day, but she, yeah. you know, they're busy playing their video games right now. Um, the older two have a ballet audition this evening. So we're going to pop through what we can get through. And then yeah. I dip off and put hair in buns and belly buns, belly buns, belly buns, find Leo's and whatever. Some Are they stuff. nervous about this audition? Are they kind of freaked out? No, they're they're they don't seem nervous about it i think their teacher really talked about it like even if you don't get in it's just like a oh it's an audition for a ballet summer intensive which i'm not even sure we'd send them to honestly like first of all i don't know if we can afford it but second of all they're still pretty young so liddy's only 13 millie is 12 which is pretty young to go away and it is a three-week intensive i don't know that there's a one-week option so if it's three weeks i don't think we could even Lenny probably could do it if she'd done something like this before, but she's never been away for a week even. So uh, three weeks would be long. I think it would be long. If there was one week option, which maybe if there is kind of, we could, yeah, maybe we could say, hey, we can only come for one week. They might, we'll cross that bridge if we come to it. But she really framed it like, just think of this as a master class that you get to take and then Mm -hmm. go from there. So I don't think they're out. I think some of their friends are going to be there tonight. So they're not like just, yeah. It's going to be I easy. think that if Liddy were to get in, it would be good for her to go for a week. I think it would be too. And I could see Millie and her both going if we could afford it mm-hmm. at the same time, but um, only for a week. I think three mm-hmm. two would be long, but three would be way too long. So yeah, I don't yeah. know. Considering well, that they don't really. don't even know if they'll get in. So we'll just have to cross that bridge when we get to it. But they don't seem yeah. too nervous, just kind of excited. Um, yeah. Another opportunity. They had. They have to wear... So our ballet studio is pretty lax about what you wear to class. They have to be in like tights or leggings and pretty Mm -hmm. much there was tights and leggings and a Leo, but no color uniform color requirements or anything, but you had to for the, you have to have pink tights and a black Leo. And then she took all their pictures the other day in first arabesques because that's kind of like your traditional Mm -hmm. audition picture. So then they can put a face to the, to the person. They have pink tights and black Leos. Mm -hmm. Yep. We had everything we needed. So I better double check. No, Rosie's got a, Rosie is too little to audition. She wouldn't get, like, she's too little. <clears throat> yeah. But she took her picture and everything anyways. So she took a picture of all the girls. She said, it's just good to have one. Um, I think hers are the ones that ran her tights, but the other two tights were fine. So they get to wear those tonight. Looks like little, little dancers. Yeah. Little I think dancers. I'm kind of excited. Take pictures and send them to me. They're like, I'm really at first they didn't have any interest in going there like that's too scary but then when they heard like what it would kind of be like then Liddy was like I kind of want to get in I kind of want to go I think that would be really fun so yeah I'll her butterfly she would she would love it she would do fine she would I mean it, and I mean the reality is when they go away for a week even it's normal to be homesick it's not a bad thing 
you know, I remember going to overnight camp. I think I did campfire girl camp, mm. uh, maybe in later elementary, like maybe fifth grade, fourth and fifth grade for a week. Mm -hmm. But I went to Miracle Ranch, which is a horse, a Christian horse camp, I think in seventh grade. Oh, I and I remember being more homesick that time than I was when I was younger. And I think part of it was the kind of camp it was. First of all, I wasn't really into horses. I went with my, my friends who were really into horses. <laughs> and so that was just, and I was not really a strong swimmer. So swimming in the lake wasn't all that exciting. And I don't really like lake swimming anyway. So I, I think I just had more time to kind of think about home and but I don't remember feeling that way. Campfire Girl Camp was busy. You were busy. Say, depending on how busy they keep you. Like in this ballet thing, you're busy. You're in classes yeah. all yeah. day. There's optional classes at night. There's fun stuff on the weekends. There's like, yeah. so I don't know how much. You know, time I, I remember at that camp with the horses. So when you went to mealtime, they did mail call, right? And if you got X amount of letters at one time, they made a big brouhaha about it. I was just, I mean, I wanted letters from home, but I didn't want them because I didn't want anybody to do, I didn't want any attention on me. I mean, I was really, it was an awkward time. It had to been seventh grade, maybe eight, but yeah, I was not, a, I did not, I don't have fond memories of that camp. Sorry, <laughs> Miracle Ranch, you let me down, but Camp Wajawika or whatever it was over on Bainbridge, I think we were over on one of the islands. I remember having a blast. We hiked and I feel like we stayed in these kind of rustic cabins. <laughs> and uh, But one night our counselor took us up into this, I mean, it was all supervised, but kind of up into the woods and we we camped out mm -hmm. like one night and she, I, she read The Little Prince to us at night and then she I know I don't remember anything about it but then she drew each of us a picture to take home a, a something a scene from that book yeah I mean she was really above and beyond and we did candy crafts and I don't it was fun yeah horse camp not so much <laughs> only if you're really into horses that I gave you a terrible horse huh Ballet intensives only if you're into really, really into ballet. Yeah, you you definitely want to be into ballet if you're going to go to a ballet intensive. Yes. Okay, so they are not up to share anything today. I don't, unless they pop up here and say, "Oh, I have something." We're oh, ready. we didn't say also that we're in Washington State. I'm in I'm in the outskirts of Seattle, and Sarah is in the what are you? The mid desert. I'm in Southeast central Washington. Is where, yeah. that's where we live. Central Washington. In the desert. She's in the desert portion of Washington. Kind of have the rain shadow effect on the other side yeah. of the state, so we don't get as much rain. Right where we, we are. don't have a rain shadow over here. No, you get the ocean rain <laughs> coming right in. I was in such a pissy mood yesterday about it too because I love rain. I really do like rain, but what I realize I don't like is the misty drizzle that you get on your windshield. That your windshield intermittents are not quite fast enough but your regular wipers are too fast. And so you're constantly just hitting it <laughs> by hand and it's not enough to really warrant an umbrella, but yet your hair is still going to get wet if you don't want. I, I said, this is the kind of rain that makes me crabby is this dumb, stupid, misty. Blah. <laughs> if you're going to rain, just rain. Just rain. But yeah. this gloomy. Yeah. Anyway, that's what we got going today too. We got the little misty crap going on. I mean, you said you had a finish. I do have a finish. And Emily Call, if you're watching, you're going to be so impressed by this that I finished one of yours. Hold on, I got to fix this. I got it. I have it clipped up behind a, on top of another finish I showed last time. I finished Winter by Emily Call. Are those the it, Caldwell Drive it, colors or did you change? They're the Caldwell colors. They're just all DMC. Get on that fabric. And I like, it. I started it on a bluer fabric and I hated it. Yeah, I, I don't know why. The blues just didn't look that good on it. But I love this. It reminds me of Washington with our evergreen trees. So it's got cute little motifs. Pretty. I think I'm going to get a white frame for it. Mm -hmm. simple. Cute. simple. I did the, for thankful one. And, at the, and I finished it this last fall and I put it in kind of a goldish brown frame and I had a couple of, little stick on chrysanthemums on the frame. I loved it. So I'm hoping to find a couple of little embellishments to put on the frame. I'm not going to put any embellishments on here. Originally, right. her original pattern was stitched on that kind of fabric that's got the dot, polka, white polka dots on it. Oh, right. But I didn't have that. 
So anyway, got to finish. I worked, like and that was one of my magazine monthly goals was to finish that. So, yay! Congratulations. I did it. Yeah. You got any finishes? No, no. I have a stack of things that need to be fully finished, but no finishes lately. Oh no, that's not true. I have a finish. Just kidding. Um, oh. I just kind of forgot about it because it's it will be an easy fully finish. Okay, so <laughs> this was the original pattern. Oh, it's so cute. Really easy. And this is what I ended up doing. And then I have all the pieces to fully finish it all the way up. It's really cute. I is know. it just all glued on? You don't sew that on, do you? So I was looking at the directions. It has you cut a piece of cardboard and then mm -hmm. put a little batting or something behind it. Uh -huh. And then glue it around the- Hold the picture of it, of the, of the finished yeah. project up again. So you cut the cardboard the size of the oh. wall, this, the, you know, uh -huh. the piece of wood. And then, yeah, you glue the the edge of the fabric around it with batting kind of to make it puffy. And then you just glue the whole thing together. It technically interlocks, but it doesn't really stay together. You have to glue it. So yeah. I wonder who, what, what, like, what'd you say? Um, I wonder, what's the, comp what's the company or the brand? This was from, let me see, Le... Bouti de oh, that's right. Le Bouti le de Lucie, maybe? Okay. Somebody Lucie. sent that to us, didn't they? Yes. Can't remember. I've never seen those before. Those are really cute. I know. It's really cute. And yeah, it did come with all the little buttons and all the little pieces. I wonder if you can find those still. B company. What is that? Hang on. It looks like that. This must have been with it. This with it. Yes. Okay. I'm not sure this. So it kind of came in like the kind of company. part. It wasn't. Um, so I think that must be connected to it too. Do not immerse in water. Yeah. Anyways, the pattern was cute. I didn't use the called for colors. I just used a crew, a crew, a crew. Mm -hmm. And I really like it on that green Weigart. That was left over from an Alicia Paulson kit that I had gotten. So yeah, that's my signature carries stuff from the beast. I will have to do some research. They're a button company, but okay, I want to so see. The bee company is who did the buttons, and that's why. And then the other, the pattern. Is uh huh. The they moved I'll have them. to get the name of that company. I I think I wonder if they've got other cute little ones like that. No, I'll have to look it up. I haven't even done that. So that I did have a finish for me. She was working on that when she, Sarah came over, by the way, and stayed with me the day of the surgery. She navigated getting us to the hospital in downtown Seattle. We had a, a little bit of treat at the bakery. That oh, was yeah. We found this delicious. Oh, I, I drove by the other day when I took your grandpa to the Stop. hospital okay. for an appointment. I'm like, I want to go in there. I want to go in there. Um, like a French bakery, like a real European. Um, first, we had our Danish, and then we went back later and got sandwiches on their bread it was very good so and then she was there which was super helpful I mean I tell you if you have somebody a loved one having some major surgery that's a day surgery I advise you having somebody else with you because when you get up into recovery they're they're moving fast man they're trying to get you out the door and they're throwing information at you and you're tr trying to pick up meds and of course it's a big complex so you're walking long distances and anyway she was super helpful I love you and, and then she stayed so that was on a thursday she stayed till sunday which was really nice because it really helped us get him because once all of his nerve blockers and everything wore off then he was great the day after surgery yeah, pretty no, good he was like kicking his leg around <laughs> friday was like feeling oh, yeah. not much pain and lots of mobility and then all that stuff wore off because they packed the knee with stuff too that numbs it he could barely lift his foot off the bed then on saturday so and that was really discouraging to him because I think he thought, well, look how good I'm doing. <laughs> this recovery is going to be a breeze. And then they had this weird blocker thing in his leg that, of course, starts oozing. So we're calling to see if that's normal. And, and we're supposed to take it out on the th third day. And I'm like, you want me to? So Sarah stayed long enough to do that for me. So it's anyway. like a line. Say, Get yourself a good daughter. <laughs> Yeah, that thing was weird. It was, I thought it was just going to be a little needle that was like taped down to his leg, but I should have thought through it because I knew it was, I knew they said that it was going to be giving pain relief straight to his knee, 
But in my mm -hmm. head, I still just thought, well, it's a needle and it's in a nerve that's going to his knee. And it was like mm -hmm. taped down. And then it had this whole, like all this machinery and pump, and then it was attached oh, to the pump that he had to carry around. It was the weirdest thing. So when I went to pull it out, I thought it was just going to be like a little, they said, pull it out straight up. When we talked to the PT or somebody, they said, yeah, make sure you yeah. pull it, you know, vertical, you know, <laughs> from his knee. Sorry if this is freaking you out. <laughs> it freaked me out a little bit because I was like, it's still coming. It was like, I don't know, like a 12 like inch long. long. The whole, it was like a little tube that was about that long. Longer than but, that, I think it was. Really? Like, oh, I just saw it all curled up. I went to the bathroom and when I came back out, Sarah had already done it. So I didn't get, just get this done. He said he wanted it out. I'll just do it. Um, that was just, yeah. It was probably at least 10 inches long because it probably went from his thigh to his knee. So whatever the distance is from the kind of his upper quad down to his knee, whatever. Probably... And it wasn't in the nerve. It's like transdermal. So it's just under the skin. It's so yeah, it's just, just like in the, yeah, in it's just fat tissue. We've seen it into that whole area, I guess, through the, yeah. So <laughs> that was weird, though. it was kind of like, who, who asked me if it was like pulling out a worm? <laughs> One of those tapeworms. <laughs> yeah. African worms that pop out of your foot and you have to pull them out. Yeah, it wasn't like that. It was, it was meant to be there. But yeah. Anyway, it was he's feeling <laughs> But so she was working on that cute little house thing while she was here. Yeah, I got it done actually while I was in your recliner. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of stitching actually while I was over there. Um, yeah. So we do love to feature other people's work when they are willing to send it in and we call it our featured friends segment. Oh, and then we'll do Millie. Millie does have something to show, but we're going to do featured friends first. So today we have um, a little project. I think it's a whip. Yes. Um, from Norma Jean. Um, this is recipe for a snowman. So I'm going to put the picture right here. stitching this on a 32 count fabric flare snowflakes so it has the little snowflakes in the background it's cute the called for floss is is gentle arts and weeks and a couple dmc i've converted mine to all dmc this is one of my year of whips and my goal is to finish it in march so cute i think she must be i wonder if she's referencing the year of whips that uh, melanie watkins from the soulful stitcher is hosting oh, is that year. what she's doing mm-hmm that's a little uh yeah check out soulful stitcher i think you can either go melanie watkins or soulful stitcher on facebook she's got a group but i bet that's what she's talking about and that's really cute and that was by pine mountain designs too which i am stitching pine mountain designs monthly pieces for my yeah. calendar piece this year so that was kind of fun to see i haven't really looked at all of her other patterns yeah, uh, that's a, those are cute. I should go peruse her website, but that was really cute. Pine, it's Looks Pine like Mountain. Pine Mountain. Pine Mountain Design. Pine Mountain Design. I'll find her and link her in our email below if I yeah. can't see. Um, yeah, I didn't, I'm not in Melanie's group. I need to go join her Facebook group. Yeah. Oh, well, I think it's part of the 20. I don't know. I don't know if she's got a separate one as 25 7 or if she's got I mean, that I think one it's all. You're not in 25 7? Oh, I don't think I am. I, I haven't am. been doing. I need to start go, doing, going back to doing that. 25 7, if you're, if you haven't, don't know, is working 25 minutes a day, seven days a week on a project. I don't think there's, it doesn't seem like from what I know, there's a lot of rules about it. You could switch no. one that way, but it's, it's just kind of the goal yeah. to get progress every single day on one thing. Right. And just and to enjoy your stitching every day kind of thing. Because sometimes maybe you only have 25 minutes and that's it. You could do it 30 minutes. You could, you know, but 25, seven was what she was going for. Yeah. And so I think a lot of people are picking pieces that they just almost can finish, you know, like to, just to get progress or get some finishes. Get 25 minutes a day might put it yeah, in. Yeah. Cause you know how it is. I don't think we're the only ones where I can get something just about done and then just, it just stalls and there's no reason for it. Yeah. It was I like know. button up. I only had one square and those squares were not that crazy. And it I took know. me like a year to do one square. Yeah. But once I started doing 25 seven, I got it done like that. Yeah. So right. It's definitely a fun thing. Yeah. So um, nice job, Norma Jean. 
Thank you for sharing that. If you are watching, we have um, a couple, I think we have another one kind of tucked away. I just share them in the order that I receive them. So if you want to send something in, we'll feature it in the next few weeks. And we, we'd love to see what everyone else is working on. And send it to our email below. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Stitchandstuffxs at gmail.com. So thanks for sending that in. Millie, did you want to show me what you're working on? Oh, and if you send us something and we haven't shown it within a month, Shoot another email for something. Yeah, because we we're having a weird glitchy thing, but I don't know if we are anymore. But you well, just never I'm know. I'm getting emails, so I'm assuming that I'm getting all the emails. But okay, good. But I don't want anybody to feel like we were ignoring them. Yeah, I know. Yeah, because so we're not hesitate to let us know again. Are you? Yeah. I'm moving for you, babe. What's Millie Girl got going? That is great. Yeah, I like that top. That looks pretty with your red hair. It's yeah. actually a dress. You got it for me, but she gave it to me. It's super cute. She I gave, love that kind of style. I don't know. You gave it to Lily and she gave it back to you? No, I Lady, gave, you, gave, you it gave, it gave it to Liddy and she gave it to me. Did I buy it at the consignment shop? I don't know. I just really is it a Target it. brand? It is Crazy 8. It's a little big on Crazy 8. Crazy 8. What's another store? That's Crazy 8 is its own brand. I don't even know if they're around anymore, actually. I must have gotten that at Kid to Kid a long time ago. I haven't seen a Crazy Eight store for since they were. She didn't like it, huh? She didn't wear it. I don't know. She didn't wear uh, dresses that much. Really. Now and then to church, but not like. No, she, 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 likes. she likes her jeans. She likes her jeans. Yeah, she likes her jeans. Sometimes she'll wear a skirt to church. What you got? Mm -hmm. Okay, show us where you've gotten to. Oh, good. We get to see the mushroom forest again. Mushroom. Is that a small mushroom forest? Yep. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that. So, oh. I finished this mushroom and I started on the little, the next one, gray one, grayish green one, right there. Wait, that no. one. oh, up there? Mm -hmm. Oh, I I'm see. Right. Oh, going up, I see. Oh, so cute. That is I cute. love that red on that fabric. That's so cute. Pretty on that blue. Nice job. You excited yeah. for your competition tonight? I mean, he was asking if you're nervous. I haven't really. <laughs> you haven't thought about it too much. Oh well, that's good. Don't think about it. I don't really know how. You don't know how you feel about it. Just they don't know what they're going to be doing when they get there, right? There's no prepping. You just go and they tell you what to do. Yeah, it'll probably but be like a class. Last though. night, my sister's telling us like the fancy like sprigs and stuff like that. Like, In like, case they that. tell you to do it using the real French name for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot. Yeah. Is that why she was talking about like on to dawn and stuff? Mm -hmm. Oh, you might want to look that up in your little ballet glossary before you go. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if she, if he or she, the so it's a professional ballerina who comes to do at least one who will come to run this audition. And uh -huh. if she is throwing out terms like, yeah, because some, because Lisa, people cool. <laughs> Lisa will use like out pirouette, in pirouette. But there's like kind of more fancy names for those, like pirouette. It's called M pirouette. <laughs> Oat pirouette. Yeah, or well, I think the word for front or back, you can, might mm -hmm. use the French, but she often just uses the English word for that. But if this person <laughs> starts to use those terms, the girls might be like, what, what? <laughs> just look around. <laughs> know how to do it, but they don't know what the word is. So she's like, she's like, oh, I better make sure you know some of those. Probably a class on that at the intensive. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. Thank you, Carrie, okay. Millie. okay, what have you been thank working you, Millie, on? Girl. Mm -hmm. You want to go first with your wish? Sure, I'll go first. Um, well, first of all, we got a message from a person that lives in Indiana. Oh, yeah. Who um, are my daughter in law, Sarah's sister in law, Sam's wife, you know, they live in Indiana and she works at a coffee shop and a gal had come through, forgot her name already from the Nancy. email. Her name's Nancy. Nancy. And she messaged us to say that she was watching us and sub sub subscribed and she's a knitter. Well, and we knit too. And so I've been working on this cowl called the heart warmer for a while. And I mm -hmm. so do love this. I, I wasn't sure this yarn was going to be right for it because it's kind of springy, but I love the springy, but I'm still working on this broken rib pattern. I finished, uh -huh. I think I've done all of this yeah. since the surgery because knitting's my go-to when I'm tired or when I'm at the hospital or at any I just don't bring cross stitch around. So anyway, it's really pretty. 
I had ordered a coat. I, I have not had a really nice coat. I have a really nice dress coat, but I don't have a casual coat that really fits me very well. And I have two red coats that they're beautiful coats. And I, I'm going to keep at least one of them for when I lose weight. <laughs> um, but I ordered myself um, a winter coat and with a hood and it was on back order. I ordered it in December and it came a couple weeks ago. Finally, it was ridiculous, but it's kind of a dark gray. I wanted something darker so that all my knitwear will go with it. And this will look really pretty underneath it. <laughs> and I want to wear it now. Almost. But I have like, I have a smocking section to go after. I'm all, I've got like four more rows of this broken rib to do. Then there's a smock section. And then there's kind of a, another lace, a different lace pattern than that. Hmm. And then a ribbing and I'll be done. And then, yeah. So anyway, and this is a mystery yarn. It was an expense. I remember when I, I got it from somebody, they gifted it to me when they were de-stashing years ago, probably like 10 years ago. And I remember at the time, it's Woolies, Woolies brand, W-O-L-L-E-I-S-E -L -L -E -E or something. And it was a really expensive brand back then, I think. Mm -hmm. And I don't have the label anymore, so I can't tell you what it is, mm -hmm. but I love that color. So I've been knitting. Pretty. I've been doing, I think I have I have a new start. I'll just start with this because it's not very much, but I'm kind of on a Mirabilia kick, yes, which I have never really been on. And so I've been um, collecting the series that came out. I believe these were in 2005 or six. And I had previously or just recently purchased Miss Valentine. Am I going to focus, folks? Well, you get the idea. She's gorgeous. She is really pretty. And I wanted to start her on Valentine's Day. My Valentine's Day was anything but romantic. Let's just put it that way. I was caring for a husband on the couch. Yeah. I had to take my dad to a big appointment. I, had, it, I was in the car most of the day, but I got a start. I started her head. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> Not very exciting, but I did get that started. That was one of my one of my little goals and actually on my magazine monthly so magazine monthly is another facebook group run by carolyn zook and robin hall from bird's eye stitches and c zook stitch started off you you it started off being stitched from magazine every month and they have a, a prompt i don't always pick a magazine piece anymore because you know Who's going to come and rest me for it? And then they have an acrostic and you can do whatever you want, really. It's a fun group. And I had put this on. So the theme was beach and the acrostic was the word wave. And I had put this down as a new start for Valentine Fairy for V. Mm -hmm. And I need to do, I think, two more hours on her before the end of February. And I guess the new prompt is out and it's a doozy. Is it? Oh, I haven't looked. Um, really long or something? Huh? Really long or just hard letters? Yeah, really yeah, long. it's long. And the I forget what it is, but anyway, it's it's a lot. So I did that. I worked. So I've been working. Oh, this is kind of a cute. One. So this one is fun. I've been work. I did work on my Jardin Privé patchwork ate, which is a super cute little pattern that Sarah. I think I gave it to you. You did originally as a gift. Yes, you did. Oh, I know. I gave it to you at Christmas one time because mm -hmm. I thought it was bright and cheery, and you were always complaining about January. And I thought, oh, this will be a perfect little start for her in January. And it is cute. Only okay. has like six colors. Mm -hmm. And so I'm stitching it now after she finished it. And so I did that little tractor. I love, I love doing that tractor. I think I did this too. I think so. And I think the sun or the flower. Yeah, I think that's new. Yeah. I worked quite a bit on this actually. Yeah, and true. this was under for E patchwork ate. Yep. So I worked two it hours on summer. it. I probably worked. Summer. Huh? Which means summer. Yeah. I probably did more than two hours. My guess because I was just liking it so much. And it was kind of a comfort stitch. So that got worked on. And um, then I have this thing about doing a calendar piece every year for some reason. I don't know when that's going to end, but um, so I mentioned that I'm doing the Pine Mountain designs and they were released individually each month. And so I did January and I'm working on February and they're not great pictures, but you can see February there. <laughs> love birds, mailbox. And this actually spells love sideways. Oh. I kept thinking, what is that squiggly line? It's love. Oh, uh -huh. I see. yeah. 
see if I turn it this way. Yeah. It's backwards to me, but yes, that's right though. So I did that, I just took the hoop off. So let me see here. And my goal this year was that if I didn't finish each month, because there's a lot of stitching on some of these months mm -hmm. that I would roll this over into next year, a big piece of fabric to manage too. So I did finish January on time. So whoops. This is on thir 32 count uh, stormy night, vintage stormy night, which is my favorite fabric. And so there's January all done. And there's how far I've gotten on February. Yes. And I'm doing three across, three row, three across, four rows. Okay. So that was just a lot of stitching on that. And I'm having, I mentioned last time I have to tweak a couple of the patterns because she released them individually. And I'm not sure what she was thinking when she, mm -hmm. I think they're, I think February and March are not the same size as January and the rest of the month. So this February was the hardest one. And I've had to, because they were going to be too tall. This one's going to, so I had to find a way to condense, but the patterns are all very squished. Like each motif is in that little, you know. Yeah. So I basically shortened this, like you, like we talked about when you were here. Yeah. I shortened that and I've shortened this one. Mm -hmm. So this one was not going to be able to shorten very much because it's right in that border, but I'll drop it down a little lower oh, and I think I'm okay. I had to get rid of four rows. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah, on this one. It was a lot when everything's so tight in there. So anyway, but it's it's worked out so far. I really do like this one. I like it better than my, the one I did last year. I just got kind of tired of the one, the historical sample oh, yeah, company. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I had a kind of a love-hate with it. Some months I really liked and some months I didn't. <laughs> oh, I think it was the colors, but I didn't have the energy to figure out my own colors. My whip go poll this month was both both numbers called was my Christmas. Well, it's Hawk Run Hollow, and right now I'm working on Christmas. And if you're not familiar, every P, every square is like a full coverage piece. Mm -hmm. So I am doing this one, and I'll tell you right now, I did the chimneys, and I did that. You did a lot. I did part of that, and I did that. So here we go. Hold on to your hats, folks. Is it a tree or a peacock? It's a peacock, I think. Yeah, it's a peacock. Yeah. Nice. And there's some stuff to fill in here. I also I was missing the color, so I filled in those. I did that. Yeah. I think I'm going to put a little red French knot on there or some red French knots to make that wreath have berries on it. That would look cute. Because, you know, I do French knots so well. Because <laughs> they're your forte. <laughs> Why not? You could do little beads. Just, no, fresh not. Just beads, you're right. One or the other would be really cute. Uh, my other goal that I have this year is every month to work eight hours on one of my Quake Rose Banner Quakers in season. So <clears throat> I've been working on the Christmas of uh, Christmas Winter Quaker, and I actually finished page one. Yay! This is very so. This is what it looks like if you're new, and I'm working. Uh, this to about here mm -hmm. was page one mm -hmm. and here we go and I'm going to have to rip a little bit out because oh. not happy well let's see I'll tell you why in a second here so this is it it doesn't show up very well on this lighting because my colors are kind of muted mm -hmm. so like here's the page break it's part of a motif mm -hmm. same mm -hmm. as here come on focus Hmm. I'm going to focus. I'm not going to focus. What I'm going to do is these little snowflakes, the little ones, first of all, these ones were death to stitch. Hmm. They are back stitched and they're very intricate. But hmm. then, oh, really, oh, there it goes. But these little ones, I started stitching with a filament with the white. But oh, wasn't that cute? <laughs> It's cute, but I'm not doing that on this whole stinking piece because there are little snowflakes all around and I didn't like it that much. And I don't think it adds that much. So I basically only did that. Where'd it go? I'll hold it up. I only did it on these ones. <laughs> so, and they're just, they're easy snowflakes. So I'm going to rip those out. Everything on this side is just the white. I don't know why it's not showing that better, but it does show up in real life. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So page one, and I've got um, four more hours to work on this in February. And then in uh, March, I'm going to start my spring one. Because mm -hmm. then in December, so it's three months each. So when, so I started this in January. This, I mean, I didn't start it, but my goal was started in January. So I'll do January, February, and then next December for winter. March, April, May for spring, June, July, August for summer, September, October, November for fall. And I have all of them now because I finally sourced everything. I had everything for three out of the four, but I didn't have spring at all. And so I'll talk about that in my haul. So that got a lot of love actually this month. And then still limping along on my Vivaldi Four Seasons girls, but she'll get there. <laughs> That's a 25-7 piece for you. It should be, yes. And so I think what I've done is I've filled wow. in all of the snowflakes. I've just got the houses, some more there. snowflake in her arms. So she doesn't have that much to go. I just need to, like I said, focus on her. And here's the rest of it. If you're new here, this was a Barbara Anna. It was a special collaboration with Nitka Moscow. It was a kit that I actually ordered from Russia. And I think it is still available if you can navigate their web. And I don't think they can ship out to states right now. Probably not. You probably can't get it. And I don't think she's released it as a separate pattern. I don't know if she ever will, but it was a it was a cool kit. I really I fell in love with it the minute I saw it. I started this in March 21. Oh, 21. Right. No, I saw it in March of 21. I got it in June. And oh. I think I started it, but I started it in 2021. Pretty. I'm supposed to have finished it. Maybe I started it in 2022. I think I started it. You're right. I started it in 2022 last winter and I was working what? what? My puppy. I have a oh. little uh, multi poo. So we have cats too. So he's tiny. He's just like a little toy and <laughs> not really grown very much. But he, there, he has a sort of a love hate relationship with our cats because he kind of wants to play with them, but they don't really want to play with him. But they no. often sit on the chairs right where I am. There's no cats in here right now, but I had a little like gnome decoration that fell when I pushed my cross stitch. I like pushed something and it fell. So he's thinking, I think that it's a cat down there. And he's, oh, <laughs> like growling at it and <laughs> scoping it out. Growling at the gnome. Um, <laughs> so what was I going to say? Anyway, so I'll hopefully get that done soon. Um, I started that and I was doing one, I was working the season ahead. That's right. My last piece that I worked on, this was, well, it was a unicorn piece for me, but apparently now I can, I find it all over the place. So I don't know if they just started re-releasing it. It's another Nora Corbett and it is, I'm going to take it out of this protective. It's, it used to be called Trick or Treat Fairy. It's part of that series that I'm doing with Miss Valentine, I think, and the Christmas tree fairy that I started, but it's this one and I love it. This is all beads, beads. But it might just be called Halloween Fairy too. So if I think it's to... called Halloween Fairy now. That's how it's being released now. I see. On Hirschner's theme. I see. Okay. But and I found it. Somebody was selling one it. Halloween Fairy, which we've talked about before. In there is. There's another so one, is. and she's cute too. She's got like a mask over her eyes. I might stitch her someday too. But this one, I just loved. I think I just love the colors in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love her pose. Anyway, mm -hmm. I saw it for sale on Etsy for like $11. I got it off the Hirschner's PDFs for like $4. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I went to Google it last night because I was posting about it on Instagram. I wanted to get the right name. And I realized that when I just Googled trick or treat fairy, then this came up as an Etsy shop purchase also. So if you're looking for this piece and don't want to do a PDF, search it on, on um, Etsy. Hmm. But I love her, love her to death. Although I had to rip her out a little bit. Because hmm. I started her in the middle and worked up and I always make mistakes when I work up. Mm -hmm. So you can't see her skin very well, but mm -hmm. she's no, working up see. here. Yeah, I can see it. So I had to rip all of her skin from here up out. Oh. And I actually am off still somewhere in here her neck is one row longer than normal but I was not going to rip all this out because it's not going to matter there's mm -hmm. nothing there's just garlandy things and right. I did her hair and hair and this is krennic kind mm -hmm. of a blue krennic and then there's wow. beads all yeah. around her head wow but 
and it's not the colors are kind of blowing out but this gray actually looks kind of purpley which i think i love so now i'm going to start i'm going to do her arms you're fine She's out, her arms are outstretched so i've basically done all of this to about here so i need to do her arms and her owl yeah wow but oh i love her so and i you know i was so tired yesterday during the day i almost took a nap and um but then we had dinner and then we watched another old old uh james bond we watched thunderball <laughs> with sean connery which i know you're not interested in but <laughs> and i kind of got a second wind and so then we watched that and it was like 11 o'clock maybe 10 30 and dad went to bed I thought oh I'll be there in about an hour and I started watching on YouTube it was just popped up on my you know suggested for me kind of thing it was a documentary on making Mary Poppins mm -hmm. and they were interviewing Julie Andrews and Dick Van Dyke oh, it's older it wasn't it's not recent and then uh the guys that wrote the music for it and this the whole process and Disney so I watched that and then another one popped up on the Sound of Music. So I watched that, the making of Sound of Music and all that. So I stayed up till like two. I was like, what the heck? It's two. But I was working on that fairy and I was just so engrossed in getting that face done and so that I could work on her arms that I just, I went to bed. I had to like make myself go to bed, which was crazy because I was so tired earlier. So anyway, that is all I worked on last two weeks, but it's quite a bit. That is a lot. I have quite a few things. I too. did too. Yeah, I did too. I had a couple of orders from my Etsy shop. So I had a couple of hoods I've been knitting. Yeah. Yes. And then I have worked a little bit on Rosie's sweater, but I didn't grab it. I left it in the other room. I forgot. And I'll just show it next time. It's just the same knitting as I have been doing with her. So. Sarah has an Etsy shop called the Clever Hen. Yeah. Feel free and to she go. knits these adorable animal hoods. And she can make these for, if you're new here. Oh. You can, she can knit them for children or adults. And I think her goal was always thinking she would be making child size ones. I, I didn't even advertise adults until somebody asked me if I could do adults. She gets all her orders are adult orders. So if there are adults running around and somebody from our channel even ordered one. Mm -hmm. Ordered, I can't remember who it was now. Yeah. And I think I gave one away once too. They're fun. Yeah. They're easy to knit. They're fast and they're cute. But Sarah never pictured that it was going to be such an adult thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't mean adult thing as in kinky. No. But... Well, I mean, I don't know what people are doing with them once they got them, but they're not meant to be kinky. They're just cute little. They're just knit, you... chunky, chunky yarn, and they're all. I always get raccoon orders for raccoons. Occasionally a fox, but usually raccoons. Are these both raccoons again? Uh -huh. And same wow. size. Okay. So they're ready to go in the mail. Oh, I have to finish. I bet if you did a possum one, Lindy Stitches would buy it from you. <laughs> if you guys follow Lindy Stitches, I don't know if she's still doing it, but I was dying because she was feeding a possum. I think she named this possum in her backyard Penelope Possum. And it, I don't, it must be a rare thing where she lives. I think she lives in I Illinois. Say, I cannot even fathom wanting to feed a possum. Because here, possums are like disgusting. <laughs> Yeah. To us, they're just like big rats and they're, they, they are roadkill most of the time on the busy roads and they're weird <laughs> and they're just, their tail just creeps me the heck out like a rat's tail. But she, <laughs> I think it was before Christmas, had a, a possum visitor and she was, she was, she's designing a pattern. I, I think she. Did she already release it or was she just stitching? I don't remember about a possum. So I love you, Lindy. I doubt you really watch us, Stephanie, but I'm I sure. just want to tell you that people on the West Coast do not love possums the way you do. <laughs> they are sort of a, it's a foreign concept to me. Though. But you might like a possum hood. <laughs> I'm not making possum hoods. Like, I don't know what that would even be like. It would be like a raccoon hood with no ears, <laughs> which is a gray. I don't know. Anyway, I'm looking at my hand so I can show a picture. Mm. I've worked on that. Come here. Come here. I have not had the brain space to pull mine out. I didn't figure you would. Well, don't lose faith in me, Tina. She, she, okay, Tina Goodell. From Tina Stitches. I watched one of her videos and she, she's talking about how she figured out a way that you could stitch this one area and only do one pane. She said, I'm thinking about you, Kim. And I'm like, you don't have faith that I'm going to be able to do this piece. And I need to 
shorten my goals? This, yeah, I'm just I doing. think you need to get over your hurdle of pattern keeper. And once you do that, I, do. I think you'll be like, this is easy. You can pull it out anytime. Right. And and figuring out where... it a couple times, I'm like, oh, I love that. And I really like it. Right. I need to figure out where I left off and what my method of parking is going to be. And I, I just, that's what I need to do. And I just need to have time like a Saturday to just sit and do that. Oh, you've, oh, it's looking so pretty though. I love those colors and you've made a lot of progress. Yeah. So I'm probably halfway through the first page or something like that. Or maybe yeah. halfway. what did I, I mean, that's pretty good for a hey. On the fourth row, fourth column. Mm -hmm. I'm doing two, um, I'm doing half cross with two strands rather than one cross, uh, one strand full cross. And I, I saw somebody, by the way, on that Facebook page for that Hade, they're abandoning their 28 count and going to get an Ada, which I think is what sees like stitches doing on hers on. on your, on your Facebook mm -hmm. thing? On my, on my stitching Ada. shelf. Yeah. Sorry. Like, can you be gridded or no? Oh uh, yeah. You can get pre-gridded. I thought maybe I need to do that. I'll end Where up. Where are you on? 28 count? I think so. I'm, I'm doing five count. I might be doing 25. I feel like I think I'm doing 25 count. I'm doing 25 count to one, one over two. No, one over one. I think I'm doing. Yeah. I'm one full cross that. with one thread. Yeah. I think that's what you're doing. Yeah. On 25 count. But I'm thinking, I wonder if an Ada would be a little bit bigger. I don't know. I don't really want to start over either, but I could. Rather than the gridded fabric that I'm like what I'm using. What are you using? I'm using a gridded, but I just think it'd be bigger holes if I did an Ada. Well, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't compared. But it's just would be so big. And then I think, oh, framing it. Because that's a piece that if I finish it, change the I mean, when I finish it, I would want it framed. You're, you would change the count to? To what? Whatever Eight. Carolyn Zook's doing. 18 count, I think. Start over on an 18 count grid. Huh? Huge. Yeah, it is huge. I did work some on my... Rosewood Manor for Rosewood Manor oh, February. We're doing February, it. Rosewood Manor February, people. I haven't done as much as I thought I would on it. Probably because I didn't actually put it on my like magazine monthly goals. But oh, oh so pretty though. Oh, I still it. have a lot actually on that tree to do. It has a lot of different yeah. details Her, on that little list. Tree. trees are crazy. The trees are fun. Crazy. I need to pull this out again. Maybe tonight. That's a, that's a big piece too. It is big. Yeah, it's really wide. Mm -hmm. I'm not here on this tree. That's all I've done. <laughs> this little. Well, when you're done, I'll probably want that back. <laughs> I really love it. I think I thought, oh, I have a different tree one by her. But yeah. I don't yeah. know. I love that one too. I, I, I love trees. I love trees. I love trees. I don't know why. I'm not an arborist or anything. I like trees too. Um, and I worked, I worked on this while dad was while we were waiting for dad on mm -hmm. um, summer etching by Cecilia Turner of Heart and Hand. It's in the Punch Needle and Primitive. So I picked this for my theme piece for my magazine monthly this week. This, cause um, beach. beach. And I Perfect. am doing my own color conversion from colors I had in my stack. I love, oh, I love that second fish. Isn't that pretty? Was that Schneckley you're using? I can't remember. It is oh. Schneckley. Schneckly, yeah. Look at that color variation you're getting. Oh, that's great. Well, I'm doing each little section individually. So each diamond, I'm stitching a diamond or part oh, of cool. a diamond at a time so that even though it doesn't look like I am, because we've got the, mm -hmm. the same, but I stitched those separately. But yeah, I, I love it though. I love how that's turning out. Me too. And then the bottom fish is the same as the top fish and it will also be blue. So there's three of them. Yeah. Facing two different ways. I like them. Um, and so I'm actually stitching out of a magazine for my main piece, which is I don't always do. I better zip uh -huh. out if there's any threads. Um, what else did I do? Okay, so another one of my magazine monthly this month was um stitching by the sea, which was a pin cushion type. I think it's called a pin cushion, yeah. You brought me mm -hmm. that. Oh, your, yes. yes. So cute. I worked on this for a couple of hours. Let's see. I did, I have the whole border done so I can get mm. all the way around. And then I stitched really this whole square in the middle. Wow. 
Wait, so do you have just two more sections to go? Two more squares left, yep. Oh, wow, that's coming along. Crab and oh, actually three fish that's very similar to that summer etching that are based in different directions. Mm -hmm. I'm using mostly the called for colors, but I changed a couple. Yeah. I changed the orange, orangey color because it's what I had on hand. It's really close to the called for color. And so I just did that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if everything else is the same. And I worked, oh, this one I looked at a lot, actually. I've been working on my Shores of Hawk Run Hollow mm -hmm. with a water beach theme because of the magazine monthly. And I've been doing the moon. The moon above will guide my love. Maybe I'll take the hoop off of it. Do the whole thing. Am I dropping everything? Okay. Oh, look at that. You're almost done. I'm almost done with the fourth square. I think I just have two more stars to do and a bunch of little polka dotted. Is the moon all done? Moon is done. Oh, wow. You did get a lot done this month. Yeah, I did. I'm trying to get it all done, this square all done this month. And then I had some black left over, so I went ahead and just was working on the border. I like what Julie Dixon has done with some of hers where she's bordered down the border for all of them and then she can work on whichever square is calling her name yeah i was thinking about that when i was working on my christmas one this month i thought oh i should work on a border drop it down a little bit plus the border is kind of mindless to stitch like yeah especially after you've done the first couple then you're just making sure you go over and down yeah there. exactly which i keep thinking oh yeah that would be easier to stitch the next border because i've already got a guide Counting right. out 88 stitches on that little tiny fabric is. Yeah, I know. It is. I have to count really. Tedious. But again, I thought, okay, if I do 10 stitches, don't cross the 10th, do 10 stitches, don't cross. Then it's easier to count. I need to do that next time. I do 10, 10 half crosses and cross the 10th. But yeah, either way works. Oh, and then, oh, I see. And then you go back and cross them. Because mm -hmm. yeah. when I can, I like to do that method of yeah that. that makes sense yeah I guess yeah well DMC I don't have to do full cross at the yeah can I show this yep. Start with? yeah I did you um, talked about wanting yeah you showed it because you had the cloud I going. think I had the cloud outline done and mm -hmm. or partially done and now I've got the outline all done and I've been working on the fill in it looks like I've done hardly anything but that's so many stitches <laughs> mm -hmm. stitching it on what is this what did I stitch this on then? Do you remember? I'm doing it over one. No. Yeah. But I can't remember now. What the it's fabric. one of those ones you ordered, I think, with your gift card from Christmas, maybe? Did you? The no. fabric? This one, I think I cut. Oh, okay. Off of something else. Because look Why how. Why would you have that big? Oh, yeah. Well. I can't think what I cut this off of, but I feel like I did. It's something else I had finished. Is that going to give you? Yeah. Oh, I'm doing it over one. one. I'm doing it over one. So it yeah. should so it definitely small. I can't remember yeah. if it's 28 over one or smaller. Uh -huh. Um. Okay, two more. Almost there. Mm -hmm. I worked on my Cricut collection that you gave me for Christmas. Rest and be thankful. Pretty, pretty. I'm working on the roof now. So I have the border, wow. the border all done. And then the chimney is done. Mm -hmm. And then there's the roof. Pretty colors. I love the colors in that piece. They're just so pretty and muted and restful. <laughs> I guess that's the word. Yes, I really like working on this one. Eventually, I'll probably do like make a goal. Like a lot mm -hmm. of do it. I know I really like the colors in that. They're very gentle. Mm -hmm. The last thing I worked on, kind of the main thing I've been working on, is my February calendar piece, um, cottage garden samplings. I'm working on this dove. Oh wow! And I almost have that dove done. So my goal is kind of like, oh, if hold I the, could just hold the picture up, again, hold the original pattern up again. I'm trying to. I could get that dove done and start on the heart. Oh, there's the head. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I haven't filled in the eye and the beak yet. I'm just doing uh -huh. the chalk white. 
Yeah. I gotta talk with dad now. Um, so my goal is to get this one done and then be done with white for a while and move down to the heart. Because that's a yeah. lot of that I've been doing um, between this and the snowman from my piece last month. Yeah. Um, and I knew that this would be a multi-year calendar piece. Yeah. And Sarah's doing them on individual pieces rather than one big piece. Individually, and then I'll finish them and trade them out. Of mm -hmm. Something like I've done with my Alicia Clausen. Mm -hmm. So that's everything. <laughs> I think there might be a couple other pieces I pulled out but didn't remember. Yeah. Because Alicia been... Paulson, by the way, mentioning her, she's got some new patterns out that she's taking to Nashville. Yes, you guys should go look up Alicia Paulson. I'll put it on her on her Instagram. And I love Mark, it comes up in March. I've actually bookmarked a couple of pieces that I am really interested in. We've talked about um, Tiny Town, the Tiny Town pieces. Um, mm -hmm. They're they're like seasonal there's like a valentine tiny town a halloween tiny town is it heart and hand heart and hand i think heart and hand, I think they came out with one that i absolutely love it's called i showed sarah i messaged sarah it's called honey time i can't remember what it was called i don't even know Go to heart and hand on instagram i think it's them and she's done some pre-releases there's a couple other ones that i mean i won't talk I, i'm not going to pull them up because i'm going to order them and then i'll be able to show them but um the Designers are starting to really sneak piece, sneak peeks at their designs. And I'm sure Carolyn Zook probably will do uh, an extra video that she does with um, in conjunction with Garon, because Garon, you can pre-order through them and they're pretty darn fast. Yeah. They go to market and then they they if you pre-order, they can get them and then they ship them out. Yeah. Right. So be looking for that. They actually on their website they end up having a whole tab and they just list all the market oh. pieces. I wonder if they've started that yet. But I think it's March. I think I think Nashville happens in March. Me too. So it's coming up because uh, we're halfway through February. Thank you very much. Coming up so fast. Dinky little month. <sighs> yeah. Well, uh, I do have haul. Do you have haul? No, I don't have any haul. Okay, so... I, not only am I on a mirability kick, but I'm also on the Quakers. <laughs> so I already talked about how I was going to work on each one each season. So I finally got my spring Quakers pattern. Love it. Wow. I didn't used to think I liked the spring one as much as the summer one. But I, after I got the colors and the fabric, I really do like this one. It's a lot. These are huge motifs. Uh-huh. Yeah, this one down here has your bigger than you kind of like think they're going to be yeah yeah like that i'm sure is solid stitching mm -hmm. anyway so i got my pattern i got this actually off of amazon because i had an amazon gift card that i needed to use needed to use and i waited forever for this the fabric is picture this plus half shell and it is called valor hmm Ooh, pretty isn't that pretty? And then my threads finally came. Ooh. The Valdarnies. So we've got that. I think it's going to be gorgeous. Yeah. Um, I think after working two more weeks on winter, I'll be ready to start something different. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm really excited about that because I it kind of came in pieces. Like I ordered the Amazon, I ordered the piece on Amazon the pattern and then I ordered the Valdani separate from the fabric because if you order fabric anytime with one two three stitch it holds your whole order up mm -hmm. even though what gets me is sometimes it'll say out of stock right when you go to look for something it'll just flat out say out of stock at other times I'll place an order for fabric and it doesn't say out of stock and then it doesn't ship for like two or three weeks because it must be out of stock I don't know but anyway fabric finally came it took a long time but it's picture this plus, so maybe I shouldn't be so surprised because mm -hmm. I think those are harder to source. Anyway, then when Sarah came over, she had, we had gotten this from, I believe this was from Julie Dixon because mm -hmm. she's the one I saw that stitched this. And she, she showed it like a year ago. I think it was one that her mother had started. It's called Peace Inside. And I saw it on her Instagram and I wanted it. I just loved it. And it's by Midsummer Night Designs, who is no longer designing. Mm -hmm. um, but she so kindly sent it to us. And Sarah had it and brought it over to me. 
And it says, this is our home. The door opens wide with love all around and peace inside. And I, I just really, really like it. And it's stitched with gentle arts. So I got that. And I, I think I might start that sometime this year. Mm -hmm. So that's so pretty. And then Sarah passed to me the Rosewood Manor stocking that she did for Jesse. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Love Rosewood Manor. Another click I'm on. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. Maybe Carolyn Manning soon. And wow. then I got, I I did my flea market flowers. I told, I talked about this. I did not like the fabric I was working on. Mm -hmm. So I got a piece from one, two, three stitch. And now I don't remember what this was. You were going to do a black Ada, but they were out or something. So what they were out. So I think I got a 28 count and holy guacamole. I don't know. You see those holes? No. <laughs> I don't see what have you been doing it on again? A black 32 linen? count, I think. 32 count. I think I wanted to do it. I was doing it on a linen, and I didn't like the way my stitches were laying. Oh. So I got, this is a Lugana. And then I ordered some beads that I'm not sure what they're for. <laughs> I ordered them because they, I, I'm sure they're for one of my, I'm sure they're for the Miras. What? Probably my. Stop now. Because I, I started the Thanksgiving Fairy. But these are the antique ones. Anyway, you've all seen these. But I love that color. And they're for something. I'll I'll just put them aside and I'll remember that I've got them. Eventually. And then I also ordered these two. Oh, I know. These two fancy flosses. Um, the gal that did the Lee Market Flowers on black on, Inst on Instagram, she substituted for sure these two colors. For some of the ones that were DMCs, so I went ahead and ordered them. Pretty. And then I bought a blending filament, and I'm pretty sure I bought this to go with my winter Quakers, but I'm not doing that anymore <laughs> because, yeah, Whoop. yeah, not happening. <clears throat> no, not happening anymore. But I'll try the flea market flowers on this linen. I mean, with my magnifier, I'll be able to see the whole. I can't see them. I'm pretty sure this is a 28 count Lozana. Yeah. I wanted an even weave. That was why. I could see the holes on the 32 count over two, but I wasn't liking the way my stitches were laying. Stitches. Okay. It just looked, I just did, it just didn't have good coverage. And you know, sometimes linen's perfect for a piece, but some pieces just don't call to me. Yeah. And I still love it on the black, and I'm not gonna abandon. Although black Ada is back in. Oh. Okay. And then my last. Hall was my historical sampler company from England, cotton and twine. And this is a cutie. And they actually have a new stitch along starting on their website. You should go to their website and it's a stitch along hmm. called something about home and house. And they have a sneak peek in this. I saw, I did buy it. Anyway, this was the January design. Enjoy, enjoy all the little things in life. Oh, that's cute. And it came with the hoop. This is the greatest subscription, I think. Came with a really pretty little Valentine card. Oh, love. <laughs> they always have a few extras. Came with a Rocky Road chocolate shot, hot chocolate. And then these are the colors and the fabric. And they're usually on an Ada. And these are the colors for that. So pretty. They're pretty. Oh, yeah, so I that, like and I think I thought I was missing a subscription. I had to change my credit card. This was so frustrating. My credit card, my debit card, you know, expired until I got a new one. And of course, all your automatic subscriptions mm -hmm. have to be updated. And I'd forgotten about this one. And I got a notification. They ship late, I think. I can't remember what their shipping schedule is. This is January. I was thinking that my January one didn't go through. So they they must have uh, billed me for this one in December. Uh, but I had one coming for February. I thought maybe I was going to miss one. And maybe I am. I don't know. I, I can't keep up. It's okay if I missed one. But I know I had to email them. And then the thing is, is it's through Shopify and trying to navigate their website because it showed that I was updated, like my credit card had updated, but I wanted to, she said, you could recharge it and then you'll get your subscription, but I couldn't find a recharge option. 
Mm. And she was emailing me back and forth about it. it would be on Shopify's, but I couldn't find it. I had an IT ticket out with them, but that, that didn't really help. And then all of a sudden I got notification that something's shipping. So maybe mm. that is the one. I'm not going to be missing one. I was looking up the stitch but, Oh yeah. Is it like a you release that flew a little bit at a time? That kind of, oh yeah. Four, four weeks, days. yeah. I'm just buying the PDF. It came to be like uh, $12 with the, it was 15 pounds, but it's $11 or something like that. Okay. American. This is Did the, you see the sneak peek? Sneak peek of it. Isn't that cute? I love the colors in that. That is cute. It's the theme though. What does it say it is? Home is where the heart is. Yeah. And it's in a, it's a collaboration with somebody, I think. Stitch Robia. Yeah, that's right. It almost looks like a Doreen Jones a little bit. I was thinking the color and the yeah. style looks like that. Yeah, I thought I want that. I'll do that. Anyway, I think that's all my haul. I'm on a I'm on a haul diet now. A haul diet. Yeah, I I can't just spend like I used to. A haul hold off. Mm -hmm. What do we usually do after that? Giveaway? Plans? Giveaway. Okay, let's do giveaway. We have a giveaway. We have a winner and oh, we, we have, have a winner. I'm sorry if you're hoping in a while. Win. Sorry. Oh, actually, before that, I wanted to talk about this. Okay. Teresa Ruddy. So Teresa oh, yeah. Ruddy is a viewer of ours. I actually sent my Viscornu to her when we did our oh. Chris, uh, Christmas small exchange. She very kindly sent me these little tiny little heart earrings that her <laughs> daughter makes. Her daughter has an Etsy shop which Sarah is going to link in below, yes. but she wrote that her daughter designed a cross-stitch planner for Teresa that I wanted to share with you. She's on Instagram and then Sarah's got the link. It's Ray, by Ray Designs and her name is Miranda Ferry. Um, and so you can, if you're looking for a downloadable cross-stitch planner, she sent me a copy of it. And so it's just a PDF, I think. I haven't gone to the, I haven't had a chance. There's like a project worksheet. And then there's pages for each day of the week. Okay. It says daily planner so I can stitch more. And it looks like she's got, it's separated out. So like write your top three goals for the day. So I think it's like getting stuff done and then your stitching goals too. So like getting stuff done that you have to get done before you can stitch. Uh, Check off your tasks throughout the day and then schedule, map out your full schedule. I can't find so that. What's it called again? Her, her Etsy shop should be Ray Designs by Miranda, all one word. And Ray is R A E. Is it not pulling up? I didn't put it all one word. Oh, yeah. Etsy has got the worst search engine I have ever seen. They really do. They really do. So you've got a, a page for each day of the week that you can, so you can plan your regular stuff out. Actually, I kind of like that. And then you're stitching out on it too. So found it. if you're looking for something, did you find it? I did find it. Yes. Does she have her earrings on there too? That was what I was kind of looking to see. No, I don't think so. Just oh, so maybe she doesn't sell those. Downloadable <laughs> habit trackers. Oh, that's nice. Sure. Yeah, uh, cross-stitch printable planner pages, things like that. So her prices are typically 2 to $5 for like oh, wow. pages. So like, uh -huh. you it. it looks like maybe these planner sheets for. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So yeah, so we'll put the link down below. Ray Designs by Miranda, all one word on Etsy. And I'll link it below too. So you can yeah. So oh, anyway, it. thank you, nice. Teresa, for bringing that to our attention. Thank you for the cute little earrings. And Good. that was a fun surprise in my box after a rough week that came this last week. So that was kind of fun. Fun. That's really fun. One day I went out to the mailbox and I was expecting, I think, my one, two, three stitch package. And then all of a sudden I thought, oh, this isn't from them. This is from Teresa. Thank so you. thank you very much. Fun. Our giveaway from February, which I didn't realize we weren't going to record for two weeks. No, we didn't plan on taking a break, but we it's a Valentine one and it's the Little House Needleworks lovable petites. And they're just little Valentine petites that are adorable. I really love this one. And that oh, one. I like them. Yeah. So our winner, sorry for the chip crinkling over there. Apparently my family has demolished a whole bag of tortilla chips. 
the winner for that little love is Emily Call. So congratulations, Emily. Congratulations, Emily. I will, I think we have her address. Have we sent, we've sent, she's won yeah, before. I believe so, yeah. Up here, sorry. I think so. And then our next giveaway for this week is this cute little oh. design from Lizzie Kate. Um, clean, it says clean houses, never last hugs and kisses do. And I actually did stitch this and I like it. I haven't fully finished it because I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. But so the button, there must be a button in there. Um, And I'm not even sure. But you had the buttons? I, I think I might've used the buttons. I think it came in like a little CD case. You know how these boxers mm -hmm. came in little CD cases? Yeah. This is just the design. No, nothing, no, none of the materials. Um, The pattern calls for all DMC or weeks or sampler threads but it has a conversion for all all and the you can find a flower button anywhere oh yeah you can it probably says where the button is from too so you can probably yeah. the button is from no it doesn't sources fabric yeah. sampler over dye threads frame oh button no normally you know normally patterns say where they got their button from yeah it's not today to be it is the 18th Anyways, you could easily find a cute little clay flower button. Oh, yeah. But go to the button company. Tiny, no, oh, yeah. And then there's some little tiny buttons for the flower and then the other two flowers, the center. Oh, yeah, little tiny petites. Okay, okay you yeah, those you could find. Um, little French knots or whatever. Easy. I didn't put your library book. Oh, it's probably on the table with a bookmark in it. So the winner, or um, so the, we'll draw for the winner for that. And the word you need mm -hmm. to use in your comment down below is the word clean, clean, clean. Because um, it's kind of a nice time of year to do some cleaning. Spring cleaning is almost here, right? Oh, oh yeah. My spring cleaning will lead to packing. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. What are your plans this week? My plans are to, well, to work on my February monthly acrostic, which is mm -hmm. these cute little vintage Valentine stickers on mine. Thank you. Thank you. So I need to finish my shepherd's bush ornament because mm -hmm. I had two months to get that done. I just have beads and some outlining to do, I think. Um, winter's done by Emily Call. Um, and I have to work three hours on my walk in the woods, which is that cricket collection alphabet that I showed. It was part of my Bringo. Mm -hmm. It's got a, a tiny. Yeah. Three hours on that. I need to do two more hours on Valentine Fairy. And then I met all those goals i need to do another half hour on my whip go piece which is um, christmas at hawk run hollow okay and i need to do two one two four more hours on my quaker winter quaker so i'll do probably two hours this weekend and two hours next weekend and it'll be i will have met my goal for both january and february for that and then in march i get to start the spring one but I don't have a lot of other, I have some other pieces that I did not put away from Bringo that I want to keep. I'm going to keep working on how the trick or treat fairy because I'm really in love with her. I might put some stitches in um, my Thanksgiving one that I started during Bringo. I think the Valentine one I'll put aside for now. Mm -hmm. um, what else was in that bucket? I have another bucket in there. Um, I need to do my border on my joyful world, which is supposed to be my 25 seven. So I need to get back to that. I feel like life settled down a little bit. I think, mm -hmm. you know, dad's, dad's yeah. doing pretty well. And I mean, I still have to do, you know, like, here's the deal when you're married for a while <laughs> and you kind of have a division of labor in the house, like I cook dinner, he does the dishes and takes the garbage out. Mm -hmm. He also takes the garbage to the curb on the garbage night. Right. I'm having to do those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he'll vacuum, and sometimes I vacuum. Now I'm doing all the vacuuming. I'm doing all the laundry. I'm cleaning all the bathrooms. I'm, and, you know, we usually split the bathrooms. So there's that, but it's luckily our house doesn't get that dirty. There's just two of us. I say you could probably just not do your bathroom for a few. Yeah, my floor. I know. Well, I wouldn't have done the bathroom in the guest room except for I or the guest bathroom, but I was using it because this bathroom over here had the big toilet seat extender for him and I hate sitting on those things because my legs dangle yeah we actually had to put a book on the floor for him to rest his leg on because oh, yeah, right. for a while <laughs> that's gone now so I'm back in my own bathroom but I was kind of keeping that one clean because that those toilet seat things get so that's gross true. yeah they're that's so true. gross so that's gone so I was constantly wiping that up for him He's not he had a, huh 
Uh, he's not using it anymore. Plus he had a urinal in the bedroom. <laughs> so I was emptying that and cleaning that every day That's true. in the middle of the night. Okay, you guys, this is the thing. The night he got home from, he got home from the hospital at 6.30 on Thursday night, right? And I'm thinking, okay, we're, we're I'm, I don't even think he took any Oxy that night because his pain was so good because of all the stuff they sent him home mm -hmm. already packed in his knee. I found out, so, you know, they sent us home with a belt to put around him, a gate belt to hold on to him because, you know, the knee is not, your muscles aren't really working. Yeah. That man got up and went to the bathroom twice in the middle of the night without my help the first night he was home with a walker. I read, oh, I was so mad at him. So then after that, I said, you either wake me up or you use that urinal that we bought because I do not want to, I'm like, you fall, man, it's bad. So anyway, it was clean that. Then I had to clean the guest bathroom because I was using it and I hate dirty bathrooms. And plus then I, now baby Junie and her mommy are in town. So they spent one night with us and then they're coming back. So I had to clean the bathroom for them. So normally I'm not cleaning that bathroom on a weekly basis because it doesn't get dirty, but just, this just happened to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway. I don't know. There's just a lot of putsy things you just do. And I have to fill up his ice machine with the water bottles. And <laughs> he can't really carry anything. He can carry like a travel mug of coffee, mm -hmm. kind of. Carries his phone in his pocket. I told him I put a little basket on his walker and he vetoed that. Little fanny pack. <laughs> I told him maybe next week we kept that we little bag that had the pain pump in it. He could have just kept wearing that with his phone and stuff in it. <laughs> <laughs> just take the do we still have that bag or did we throw the bag away? Yeah, we threw the whole he thing. He wouldn't do it anyway. He wouldn't do him, it anyway. So when he had his last knee surgery six years ago, when he was finally able to really go out and about, but was walking long distances was hard in the store, he really wanted to get out of the house. So we went to Costco. I said, okay, well, you can just ride on the little cart, you know, the little old people cart. He's like, I don't want to ride on that thing. I said, well, you're not walking through Costco yet. He wasn't near ready for that. And so he finally agreed, okay, he'll ride on it. He said, but do not take my picture. Do not take a picture. Do not send this to the kids. I don't want anybody to see me on this that knows us. And I said, what's the deal? Because I feel like a fat old man on this thing that just can't walk. <laughs> Whatever. So I just told him, knee, like replaced, man. <laughs> I know. Well, and we need to get him the shirt. My son found a shirt. He saw somebody wearing it. It says, I had a joint. And it's just like I had a joint and then in little tiny print replacement at the bottom. <laughs> anyway, I told him we should go to Costco next week. Maybe you can ride the little cart. And maybe when Junie's with us, she can ride the little basket with you. <laughs> He's like, no. Not, it was not a fan of that idea. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. So but I think sure things are not supposed to have our kids in that little basket anyway. <laughs> <laughs> They probably would frown on that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so, but I think, I feel like we've kind of got our stride, you know, and I think work is going to be busy and stressful, but I, I'm able to let it go at night usually yeah, that's good. and just go. But we've been watching a lot of CSI and the Bond movies now, and I don't even know what else he's, I don't know what he's watching in there. <laughs> but we bought a TV before his surgery because our TV died one time when we were in here actually recording so we bought i don't know what do we have a 65 inch 55 i don't it's a big tv yeah big i feel like the man thinks he's in an amc theater in there because it's the big <laughs> tv and he blasts the sound and he just like you know we are in a house <laughs> hearing. <laughs> hearing is going his hearing is not yeah he needs to go to an audiologist and have a hearing test he did go a while ago they they weren't too concerned but it's probably time to go again i noticed of, yesterday like a, a mammogram you kind of have to check it regularly <laughs> i noticed yesterday at pt and it could be he was just distracted yeah he, he kind of had a word retrieval issue that i was kind of surprised about i kind of like <laughs> my ears kind of perked up our friends had to take their car in for uh, a recall or some uh, for a repair because their cruise control wasn't working and he was we were talking about you know did they get their car back he goes yeah yeah they took it in remember because that speed thing wasn't working and I'm like that speed thing oh yeah <laughs> more on this later <laughs> I hope not actually oh you I know it was a little bit scary but then he's been fine but he didn't hear her during PT but he was laying down and I, he wasn't so much she had really yeah, I think he was a lot of pain and she was telling them to lift his leg 
after straightening it and I'm sure he wasn't just ignoring her <laughs> but, no, I'm I not doing it. that lady and you know the other thing is when you go to the doctor you're still wearing dang masks yeah yeah so, I did take my dad by the way if anybody's following me along at home <laughs> uh to his neurology appointment after his MRI clear back in November we finally got into an appointment and she did not give him a diagnosis of dementia quite yet she didn't feel quite comfortable but she did recognize that there are definite def deficits but oh, that appointment was hard too because she's wearing a mask he's wearing a mask he's got his hearing aids in but you know hearing aids are crap anyway and I don't know anybody that likes their hearing aids no, it doesn't matter what brand you get nobody likes their hearing aids and oh, I it, I just feel really bad because she'd be talking to him and then he'll I was sitting across from him in a chair and he would look at me and go what and I would then repeat it. And he would, he'd would he understand when I said it. Mm -hmm. She is sending us for a better, she, okay, you guys. She gave him the option. We could either just wait another three months and check back with me. And I really liked this gal that we saw. Or we could do, we could order some neuropsych testing to tease out the you know anxiety and depression and memory loss and all that. And he goes, well, I think we should just wait three months and see you again. <laughs> And I said, well, here's the deal. Um, my husband and I are probably moving out of state this year. And she goes, oh, then we probably should do the neuropsych testing and get it going. Because it, it could take three months to get in. Because, mm -hmm. you know, mental health services in this country are in the toilet. Um, but actually, we're getting in next month. She, the gal called me. Okay, you guys, I don't know if this is normal, Sarah. But when they called me, I had to sign a whole disclosure thing just to talk to somebody about making an appointment. He had to sign it or I had to sign it. Like, what the heck? Just okay. schedule an appointment. Yeah. There's a doc you sign. Yeah, it was weird. So I did that. And then they called me and they said, well, the first appointment is usually a virtual phone appointment. We do a, a, a lengthy intake. And I'm like, Let's send us the doggone intake online and I'll just fill it out for him. But no, they, they have to do a separate I said, well, I'm sorry, but online and phone is not going to work for him. Even if I'm there, he needs to be able to hear what's going on. So she's like, well, just a minute, let me see what I can do. Because they, they're supposed to be an intake appointment, and then then they'll schedule you for the actual testing. And I'm like, oh, for crying. Expedite this a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So she said, okay, we can do it all. We can do that intake appointment in the office. I said, fine. So we were still looking at a second appointment. And this is, again a hefty drive from my house to get him to the appointment, to home, to home, but I'll do it, you know, but anyway, so then I finally got a call from the actual doctor that we were going to be seeing, and she was super nice, and I said, you know, he is very, because he called me and said, what is this appointment we're scheduling, Kim? I said, it's the, it's the neuropsych appointment, you know, for testing to see where, he goes, I already did the testing. I said, no, this is different, dad. Mm -hmm. I thought we were just going to check back with that doctor in three months. I said, well, we decided, dad, but he checked out in that doctor appointment and he checked out when we decided we were going to do this testing so she called me and I said he's very he's going to be very resistant about this I don't know how this is going to go I said he did not like the last person that did testing on him and he will tell you right off the bat I didn't like her I didn't like her I didn't like that test I she was very commanding and I didn't like her so I wanted her to have an idea of what his mental attitude is about all this right so she said okay I said is there any way we could speed this up she goes yeah she goes it'll be a long appointment but I will do the intake and I will do the testing the same day mm -hmm. so I'm going to get him in March he doesn't know that yet and I'm not going to tell him it's going to be a long day he does not need to know anything because he is so stressed about everything the man takes his blood pressure now because he had high blood pressure a month ago he takes his blood pressure I think three times a day mm -hmm. even though he's on blood pressure meds just to make sure they're working <laughs> and of course we take him to the doctor and they take his blood pressure and it's a little bit high and he's like, well, it was really low this morning when I took it. And I'm like, here we go. We're going to hear about his low blood pressure. I've already heard it. Pressure about fluctuates, times. especially when you're stressed. And, you're and he was stressed. So anyway, that's where we're at with him. But <laughs> pray for me that we can get this testing done and move along and mm -hmm. figure out, you know, because I think he needs to be on anxiety meds. But what they have him on now, he can't take all the time because it's addictive. So I think, I think he, his memory is worse. Mm -hmm. when he's stressed so if we can eliminate and he even said well you know I'm, I'm I worry until the event's over and then I'm okay and the doctor said yeah but then there's always another event mm -hmm. because it's called life mm -hmm. and he doesn't yeah yeah so yeah. 
I tell you, aging parents are not not uh, for the faint of heart. And my poor boss, her mom is in the, she's fully on dementia. In fact, doesn't even speak English anymore, just speaks German, which is where she's from. Doesn't know anybody anymore. She fell and hit, hit, broke her hip. Oh. So she's dealing long distance with a mom in a hospital. And the mom, she's an old, angry German woman. And she's just like swinging at the doctors and swinging at the nurses. And they're like, do you think we should bring an interpreter in for her? She goes, I don't even think she would understand because I don't even know if she's using real German words or if you get the wrong dialect in there, she's not going to be able to. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, you know, aging family members is, a, it's, it's a big deal in this country, right? I mean, I think around the world, but it's hard. It is hard. So, but I think we're kind of have a quiet couple of weeks with no other than PT, no other doctor appointments. So that's good. Yeah. What are you going to be working on? What's your plans? Oh, I better hurry because I have to go get the girls ready. Mm. But um, yeah, I'm going to keep working on my magazine monthly. My little. <laughs> I need to work probably another hour on my summer etching. Probably two more hours on my little um, stitching by the sea. Mm -hmm. Little motifs across. And then I don't have anything marked off as having worked on my snow queen this month. And that mm -hmm. might be true. Because I think I worked on her a lot last month for another goal, and uh -huh. she my whip go. So I needed four hours on her. This I didn't month. see her at my house. Yeah, I don't think I brought her. I think I knew it would be too hard to stitch without a light yeah. and stuff. So I need to get four hours on her. That's not too hard to do in a. I don't know what is it the eighteen like. Mm -hmm. I can do that. So that's everything I really have planned to work on, and then I'm gonna keep trucking along on Rosie's sweater. Eventually, I'll get that done someday. And then I think what you, I think from now on, if you do sweater knitting or anything for those girls, you need to do a DK weight. Yeah. Yeah. I should be faster. She just really liked this yarn. And mm -hmm. so, but yeah, I should. Mm -hmm. faster. Yeah. And I'm reading. I'm still, I'm not reading. I mean, I've just been going oh, to bed and forgot about reading. Yeah. I have been reading. What am I reading? I'm reading a Dorothy Sayers mystery, a Lord Peter Whimsey, which is, I've never read her before, but I've wanted oh. to. I'm reading the first one called Who's Body. I've uh -huh. books to read for a long time, and I was like, I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. and I'm reading, along with that podcast I like to listen to, um, The Literary Life. They're doing a short series on Aristotle, who- Oh, wow. Not one of his big philosophy books. This one's say, a short study on Aristotle. It's a book about books and play. Okay. And it is still hefty. It's yeah. not like, I don't feel like I'm catching everything because I've never read Aristotle before. So it's a totally Please don't assign that to Liddy yet. I think it's oh, a little no. over her head. <laughs> but they then talk through it. Uh -huh. episode, I'm like, I've read it and understood enough to then have it be a little bit more okay <laughs> I'm reading some, oh I got the um fourth Lockwood and Co book that's a light read that I haven't gotten started with yet because I'm reading that Dorothy Sayers and I'm kind of I trying thought you weren't going to read those anymore well that was the inheritance games I was not going to oh, do Lockwood oh. and Co with the ghost kind of thing I do oh with, yeah which apparently there's a show now about that series too but I haven't watched it yet I need to look into it is a it in a house is it a house does it take place in a house like a haunted house Maybe that season does. I don't know. Uh, well, I haven't looked at it. Black what's Black. it called? Lockwood, Lockwood and Co. It takes place in kind of an alternate reality, London, where ghosts have started to. Oh, okay. It's in London. Because there was that book that was kind of weird that was taking place. It was a family that moved into a house. With it key, was on... lock and key? Yeah, that's what I was thinking yeah. of. We've watched not... some of that too. Just Jesse and I, not the girls. It's a little too much. And so. that didn't get picked up again, I don't oh, think. It didn't? Oh, bummer. I, I wouldn't think so. a fun one to watch, but we didn't finish yeah. it. I kind of felt like I had to be in the right mood. This one, creepy. Creepy. I have no idea if that'll be any good, but I did get the hard copy of the book from the library. So I need to oh. start reading that soon. Is that the one. last one? The fourth one? There's one more after that. There's five. So I still have another one. This one's called. Did you tell dad about that one? What? Did you tell dad about that one? I don't know if I told him about those. He might Lock like would... Lock I was just thinking. I wonder if he could get it on audio. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Lockwood and Co. He might just like it to listen to while he's laying there doing nothing. Yeah, I don't know if they have an audio version of it or not. 
Lockwood and Co. I'll just tell them to look Lockwood on the library. I can't remember the name of the very first one, but they can figure it out. I'm looking to see if our library happens to have a. <clears throat> yeah, those are fun. Those are by Jonathan Stroud. Oh, yeah. They're just kind of fun reads. Um, I don't see any audio books on our. Okay. Oh, yeah, actually. The first one, we have it on our Libby app. Uh -huh. So he should be able to get that somewhere. And the third one also, and the fourth one, and the fifth one are all audiobooks. So they're probably all done in audio. He can probably listen. Okay. He might. It sounds like it's light enough that it might be kind of. It is probably light enough. It's yes. just, it's, yeah, he can probably listen to that without having to even pay that much attention all the time. Yeah. Right. And maybe the audio wouldn't be hard to get on the library, but it's popular. Is it middle school age? Is it middle? I'd say, yeah. I'd say it's a little closer to young adult. Than young adult, that's what I meant. Grade. Yeah. Probably more, it's probably closer. It's probably more young adult than middle grade. Mm -hmm. A little higher. A little okay. scarier, a little bit darker. You should look for that. I think he just needs something fun to listen to. Yeah, that one might be fun. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, we yeah. better wrap this up so you can get those yeah. girls to ballet. Yep. I will let you know how it goes and if they get in. So thank you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Yeah. And yeah, happy stitching. Happy stitching. Have a good day.